But you know, our bodies can be as delicate as they are sturdy. And what I didn't realize before our next interview is just how life damaging a couple knocks on the head can be. That is until I met attorney Frank Terrell, who's dedicated not only his law firm, but a foundation to helping people with traumatic brain injuries. Check it out. Frank, thank you for joining us today. Brave in the rain to be here. <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, so give me a, a basic understanding exactly what is traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury is basically um, when someone receives a blow to the head and it disrupts the normal functioning of the brain. Now you can get a traumatic brain injury by a near drowning. You know, children often in South Florida when they fall into pools and they're underneath the water for uh, a significant period of time can lose oxygen to the brain huh. and get a brain injury that way. Interesting, because most people I would think would think like a concussion. Yes, yes, but you know, a lot of people say concussion, uh, it's really a brain injury. So anytime someone says concussion, that's really a misnomer because a concussion really is a mild traumatic brain injury. I see. So not just, but you were saying, I cut you off, but like, un, you know, underwater, but also obviously a, a blow to the head, yes. things like that. Yes. And how are, I mean, you had mentioned, uh, you know, children with near drowning experiences, but what are some other very common ways that people Well, you know, it's the, you've heard of the expression, a uh, whiplash, but in a very violent whiplash, if someone uh, is in a car and they get rear-ended by a tractor trailer, it, it doesn't have to be going very fast what happens is your head goes back and forth and if you think of an of a of an egg uh -huh. the yolk inside of an egg that yolk is like our brain and that yolk hits up against that shell like our brain hip, hits up against the skull and just by going like this violently can cause a shearing injury or a brain injury. Wow. Um, and how, when somebody um, has a traumatic brain injury, how does it impact their life? It's a very um, pervasive injury. I mean, it, it can affect every aspect of a person's life. It can affect them physically, it can affect them cognitively, they can have attention issues. Usually it's associated with memory loss and memory problems. They have difficulty learning new information, concentrating like you and I talking. You'll ask me to repeat the question. Um, so it really manifests itself in a lot of different ways. There's behavioral issues. Um, in, in more severe cases, depression can set in. Hmm. So it really can impact every aspect of a person's life. And what you're talking about, I mean, when you say if somebody, you know, is bounced around a lot or a near drowning, I mean, do people always know they have a traumatic brain injury? No, and that's one of the problems. There are 100,000 new traumatic brain injuries in the state of Florida alone. And oftentimes those injuries go undiagnosed because a person comes in and the focus is the broken leg. And only later after the discharge does the family start to realize, wow, they're being aggressive and they're acting really weird and the behavior's different. And and you know their memories off when they realize you know what they hit their head huh. and they lost consciousness on the scene but before the paramedics got there they woke up right but they did get a, a brain injury and so let's talk your firm focuses on a traumatic brain injury you also have a foundation yes set up that primarily focuses on that can you tell me a little bit about sure it? my wife and I established uh, the Terrell family foundation and really that was an opportunity for us as a family to be able to give back to the brain and spinal cord injury community and recently we established a uh, an endowed professorship at the University of Florida College of Medicine to be able to study traumatic brain injury in persons who are newly injured and then kind of follow them a year two years three years years out to see what the impact of that brain injury is. Well, it, it actually leads me to think about a little bit with the Junior Seau situation. I mean, you know, when we talk about e not even knowing, uh, is it possible that, you know, from all of your understanding uh, of, of, I guess it's TBI, yes. uh, that it really could have been correlated with depression and things like that? You know, Nick, it's a great question. Um, what we know is it's difficult to speculate. I know the family is, is really wrestling with whether or not they're going to um, allow his brain to be studied. But what we do know is there's a condition called CTE, which is chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And that's basically a, a progressive degenerative disease of the brain that's mostly found in professional athletes, football players, boxers, hockey players, um, where it's repeated concussions 
result in this condition that you can only diagnose after a person passes away. Wow. We had a, in our own community here in South Florida, John Grimsley, a former Miami Dolphins uh, football player who was diagnosed after he had passed away. They examined his brain with CTE. Mm -hmm. Last year we had the Chicago Bears player Dave Duerson who committed suicide and they studied his brain and the researchers found indisputable evidence of this condition of chronic traumatic encephalopathy. So to answer your question, I don't know until the neuropathologist comes out with the report saying, hey, this is what it is or sure. it's what it's not, but it wouldn't surprise me. You know, as a linebacker, you lead with your head um, in almost every play to tackle, and so it wouldn't surprise me that, that there was evidence of CTE. And as active as you are in, in this community, do you think that um, the Seau family should really give it a lot of consideration to do so? You know, it's difficult for me to say. I just know that um, that it could help a lot of people. It really could help a lot of athletes, a lot of kids that are considering going into football, which I love watching football, but you know, maybe there's a safer way uh, to prevent these injuries mm -hmm. um, because it's really sad when someone is so passionate about football and so passionate about these sports um, and they get injured sure. when maybe there's a way to lessen the incidence of that injury. Talking about the foundation, if people want to get involved, what can they do? Well, they can visit our uh, foundation website. It's called the TorralFamilyFoundation.org. They can visit our website, and we actually have a scholarship now for uh, trauma professionals throughout the state of Florida, and that's anybody from uh, EMS personnel to anybody working in a hospital that sees anyone with a concussion or a brain injury. There's a national conference called the North American Brain Injury Society Conference coming to Miami this, uh, this fall, and we're sponsoring several scholarships for healthcare professionals to attend. Oh, so wow. if, if your viewers out there are healthcare professionals and are interested in learning more about traumatic brain injury, we're going to sponsor uh, some scholarships so they can get an opportunity to meet their local doctors here and trauma team in South Florida. Well, Frank, thank you so much. Is there anything I didn't ask that you need covered or want to ask? No, I just, about? you know, other than, um, you know, you know, as a law firm, you know, there, there's a, a legal aspect of representing our clients, but there's also a compassion side, you know, and it's really important, I think, to encourage people and to let people know that, you know, you're not alone and, and we're here with you and we can't represent everyone, but I'd like to think that we can love on everyone that calls us. And I just think encouragement is such a huge aspect of what we do. Well, again, Frank, thank you so much for being thank here. You. I really appreciate Great. it thank and you. braving the rain. Thank you very much. <laughs>